In this video, I'm going to be talking about a SQL query that allows you to check a setting on the directory number. And the setting that I'm talking about is all the way down here at the bottom where you can see that I've already associated this end user. I could associate more end users or, you know, delete or whatever. This particular setting is important for uh, when you're doing presence. I am in presence in Jabber and you want to check somebody's presence status. You could see that 1000 already had an end user associated, but 1002 does not. That's important because when we look at the SQL output, I want you to see that this device will still show up, but it will only show up for 1002. It won't show up for 1000. So we'll take a look. The MAC address ends in echo 1008. Let's go and take a look at the SQL query here. You can see that it's relatively long and that there's a lot going on. There's actually some nested SQL query going on right here. And we'll talk about all of that in just a moment. If we go to the CLI, we can see what this command's all about. And right here, we can see that 1000 doesn't show up in the output. Now, what we're getting is device, and we're getting the directory number. And the columns here say, this is the DN to review, and it's on this device. That's important because we'll talk a little bit later about how the uh, columns are named. And Let's go ahead and move back to that SQL command. Looking at it this way is a little bit hard to digest. So I'll turn off word wrap. We can see that it's actually really long and I'll delete some lines. You can see here that I changed how the SQL command is written. I put these slashes at the end of each line. That's because it allows me to break it down a little bit more in how I think the way I look at things. And uh, it's a lot easier than just looking at a pretty much long line that uh, essentially just keeps running and running and running and running. That's not how I like to look at things. And the, one of the benefits about breaking the command down that way is that it still works in that format. So while you're testing a new command and you're writing the new command, you can, you can go ahead and run it and it works without any issues unless you have some sort of syntax issues, but that has nothing to do with the way that it's written here. That, that just has to do with uh, not following proper syntax for the commands. So now let's, let's take a look at what this command's all about. I wanna start on this line here, actually. Um, it's not the first line, but it's just logically speaking for the way that I think, um, this is the best place to start. And that's because I'm saying which table to reference first. And I'm saying to reference the numplan table, but I'm giving that numplan table a nickname of NP. So now we understand that whenever we see NP, that means the numplan table, which is why I started on this line first. So up here, we're doing run SQL. That's how they'll always start in the uh, Cisco, in the, in the call manager CLI. If you go into uh, other command lines that aren't call manager, you might not have to start with the run SQL. Um, however, in Unity connection, call manager, UCCX, stuff like that, you do have to have this part of the command. And then we tell it what type of SQL command we want to run. It's a select statement. If you went through the through the uh, SQL course that I mentioned in the, the introduction to this playlist, where on Solo Learn, you would know that there are other uh, SQL commands that you can do, such as update, delete, stuff like that. So here's where we're saying what we want to select. We want to select from the column DN or pattern, and that column is found on the NumPlan table. Actually, we'll take a quick look at that numplan table right now before we move forward. Run SQL select first star from numplan where dn or pattern equals one thousand. Plug that in up here again. So now we can see the columns better and there's actual entries in here that make sense to us like this directory number. 
So you can see why I selected D enter pattern for, from the numplan table. That's because that's how I get my directory numbers. And I'm going to rename the, col the column. Rather than have it say DN or pattern, I want it to tell me DN to review. That's going to be the name of the column like we saw earlier. The next thing I want to do is select the name from the table nicknamed as dev. Which table is nicknamed as dev? The device table. So um, when you list out the different devices, name the column on this device, just like what we saw in the SQL output earlier. We already talked about this line. So now I want to join another table into this command so that I can look at what's there. And the table that I'm going to join is the device numplan map table. And I'm joining that because in order for me to get from point A to point C, I need to go through point B, which is where, you know, two different tables are connected to each other. As you can see here, this particular table maps the device table to the numplan table. And since I need both the device table and the numplan table, it makes sense why I'm referencing the device numplan map table. And the value in the device numplan map table, which is uh, going to be equal to something on the numplan table, is the FK numplan. So wherever you see something like this, a column in a database table that starts with FK, at least in call manager, that's going to be the PKID from this other table. So if I were to um, go and look at the device numplan map table, I would see an, a column named FK numplan and this PKID is going to be found in the output. So we'll take a look at that real quick. Run SQL select star from device numplan map. And let's highlight this output here. And we'll scroll down to where it has the FK numplan right here. That's our PKID. So that's how I'm linking these two tables together. And then I'm also going to join the device table, right? So I, how am I going to do that? I'm going to join the device table by looking at the PKID of the device and saying that it would be equal to the FK device value in the device numplan map. So let's go ahead and take a look at that now. There may be more entries in here than the other tables. Yeah, it looks like it. All right, now let's take a look at this line here and find the FK device. Right there. And we'll do style token two. And that PKID should be over here somewhere. Boom, there it is, that's our device. And um, that's how we, that's how, that's the information that I would use to link all of this together. However, there's a little bit more to the SQL command, right? We don't want to see all of them. We only want to see the ones that need to be configured. So at this point, I said, but I only want to see the output for this command so long as 
the value of the PKID on the device num plan map table is not found in the output of this SQL command where um, I am selecting this value, this whole column from the device plan map and user map table, which connects all of this configuration that I did earlier in the web interface. That table connects this piece down here. So if they're in that table, if the PKID is found in that column of that table, then that means that these that those users already have this configuration done and I don't want to see those particular users. And uh, when you send me the output, I want it in the order of the directory number. I don't have to do that. It could come out in uh, whatever order, but I chose to go ahead and have that done. So it can be pretty confusing, but in the end, um, what it what it comes down to is is really just one thing. You need to figure out exactly what data you want to be in your output, and then you need to figure out um, what tables have that particular data, and then how do you link all of those tables together, and um, if you have any SQL commands that you're trying to figure out that you're trying to run, go ahead and comment in any of the videos. And if it's something that I believe that I can take care of and I have the time to do it, I'll try to go ahead and get it done and also make a video out of it. Again, thank you for watching. And if you appreciate the content, then please subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, then please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if there's any critique or any negative feedback or just constructive criticism, then please leave that as well. Thank you.